to talk about the endomembrane system, which is composed of things that have membranes, such as the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, the lysosome, the vacuole, and the plasma membrane. In this video, I'm going to talk about all of them but the plasma membrane. We're going to do that a little bit later on all by itself. Uh, but in the, in the endoplasmic reticulum, I've already mentioned it uh, when I talked about ribosomes. Now, when we talk about the endoplasmic reticulum, there are basically two types, smooth and rough ER. Rough ER are the ones that have ribosomes already attached to them, and smooth ER are the ones who do not have any ribosomes. They both have different jobs, which we'll go into in just a second. Smooth ER, main function is for membrane production, not only the plasma membrane, but also other membranes that are found in the cell. Um, so it can synthesize lipids. These lipids can be used for sex hormones, steroids, phospholipids, oils, different things like that. Um, smooth ER is also found in the liver. It can help hydro hydrolyze glycogen, which helps break it down. Um, and it can be used to detoxify drugs and other poisons. So you would have a high concentration of smooth ER in your liver. And, you know, because you do have high, high amounts of ER in your liver, um, the more often that it breaks down a certain drug, that actually proliferates or increases the amount of smooth ER you have. And this is what gives you a tolerance to certain drugs. Because the more ER you have, the faster you break down that particular drug, and you're going to need more and more of that drug to get the same effect. And because some drugs and barbiturates are so widespread, I mean, they're almost like the same type of action, becoming uh, having more and more smooth ER in your system can actually make you immune to other types of antibiotics or barbiturates. Um, as a membrane factory, think about it like this. You know, if you have the endoplasmic reticulum, which is over here on the right, uh, a piece of this pinches off, or several pieces branch off, and you're going to end up making the stack system here of the Golgi apparatus. And then even parts of that can break off to make these small vesicles. And if it has hydrolytic enzymes, for, for example, from rough ER, you create what is called lysosomes, which we'll speak of in a minute. Um, the rough ER is involved in the production and export of proteins in the cell. So it not only packages it, packages those proteins, but also exports them throughout the cell. Now the Golgi apparatus is kind of like the shipping center. It takes in these packaged proteins, it kind of shifts them around or changes them in some way, and it exports them again. Now a Golgi apparatus has two faces. It has a cis face, which is the receiving face, and it has the trans face, which is the transporting face. So proteins will come from the Golgi apparatus, I mean, excuse me, from the endoplasmic reticulum into the Golgi apparatus. There, those proteins may be modified in some way, and they'll be shipped out through the trans phase of the Golgi apparatus. Now, one such uh, vesicle that can be transported out will be a lysosome. The lysosome is simply a vesicle, a round bubble that contains hydrolytic enzymes, and there's two processes that it might go through. One is called phagocytosis. And this is oftentimes the way food is digested within the cell. As you can see, the lysosome here joins up with a food vacuole. And when it does, the hydrolytic enzymes, which are little blue dots here, or red dots in this case, come into and digest it. So it kind of acts like the stomach of the cell. But it also could be used in a thing called autophagy, which is when the cell actually will digest organelles that are not functioning properly or that may be damaged and use those part to recycle those part. Works in the same way. The lysosome comes up and joins to that organelle that is not working properly. It digests it and those particles or those raw materials are used again. Um, now in vacuoles there are three types of vacuoles and when I think about a vacuole I simply think about some type of round structure that has something inside. The central vacuole is one that we spoke about when we talked about plants and animals. The central vacuole, which is a picture down here, you can see how large it is. The central vacuole is the largest vacuole inside of a plant, and it contains mostly water. And you can think about it, if all the water was out of this vacuole, these walls would kind of seek inward, and that would cause the plant to wilt. When these vacuole is full, it presses up against the cell wall and makes it kind of stand upright, or gives it that crispy feeling. That's why you have the sprinkler systems in a lot of restaurants, I mean, excuse me, in a lot of um, grocery stores. So they fill up this 
central vacuum in the in the vegetables in in the vegetable aisle at the grocery store, and it makes them look healthy. Now, a contractile might be something like you see here, a contractile vacuole that you may see in a paramecia. Now, I like to think of a, a contractile vacuole kind of like a bucket. You know, if I was to go out on a, on a boat and it sprung a leak, as fast as I could, if I could dip out the water out of my boat with that bucket, uh, the boat would stay afloat. But if I ever fell behind, that boat would eventually sink. It's kind of what I think about central vacuole here. If this paramecium were to be in fresh water, where water rushed inside of the cell from area of high concentration to low concentration by, diffuse, by osmosis, the contractile vacuole would suck in the water and spit it out. As long as it could keep up with it coming into the cell and get rid of it, then that paramecium is fine. But if the water comes in at such a high rate, the contractile vacuole can't keep up. The cell will eventually swell, swell, and pop. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't survive. Now, another type of vacuole will be a food vacuole, and the food vacuole does exactly what you think it would do. It holds food. All right, so this is just a brief overview of the endomembrane system. I hope this helps you, and I will be back to talk to you soon.